the Walther P38 P01? Let's check it out. The Walther P-38 served the German military from 1938 all the way till 2004. I mean, what a long service record. Used in combat all over the world. In fact, there are a number of countries that adopted this pistol. There were over 1.2 million of these made in three different factories uh, during World War II and then was continued to be made in other places. In fact, France produced it under their Manurin plant. And uh, a lot of variations of this pistol. Now, the first thing we're going to do is make sure the gun is unloaded. Uh, you'll notice that it has the Hill style magazine release, and it's an eight round magazine, all steel. And then we'll check the chamber, and of course, it is empty. Um, while we have the hammer back, uh, it does have a decocker, which brings the hammer down, move it forward to fire. Uh, that's one of the things that's similar to the Beretta 92, and then also with the open slide design. It has that same kind of uh, open, very reliable design. Uh, also with the falling locking block system that's inside the barrel, which we'll look at when we disassemble it. Uh, so this is really a classic, but yet a lot of its designs are still used in modern pistols. The P-38 was actually designed to replace the Luger P-08. Uh, mainly because of cost and how complicated the, the uh, Luger was. It cost $14.08 to produce the P-38 versus $19.80 for the Luger. The commercial model of the P-38, though, even during the 40s, was selling for about $75. It is a double single action pistol, so when we pull the trigger, the hammer is actuated. Uh, once you have your first shot, the hammer will be in the rear position uh, for subsequent shots. And also, you can cock the hammer to fire this, especially if you're looking more for accuracy. It has a really smooth single action trigger pull. I mean, it is very little take up. Right here, and then a very crisp snap. Uh, double action is very heavy, but it's still very smooth. Reset right there. I mean, that is a super quick reset. Uh, a very pleasurable gun to shoot at the range. Uh, the recoil is very mild, and of course, you know, it is a fairly uh, hefty pistol. Uh, the standard P38 all steel frame pistol weighs 34.5 ounces. Now this is actually a P01, uh, which was made uh, post-war, after the World War II. Uh, now on the slide here, you'll see P38, uh, but this was actually, uh, with the aluminum frame, it designates it to a P01. Makes it a little bit lighter. This was used by the Bundeswehr from 1954, again, all the way until 2004, which is just incredible. Uh, the German Army had a lot of different options, and they stuck with the tried and true, uh, even though it only had eight rounds. The back of the grip comes up into a nice beaver tail, so it allows you to get really high up on the pistol. Uh, the sights are a notched U in the back, which is adjustable by windage, and then you have a front blade right here that also is dovetailed into the front. Uh, typically, I found that this gun shoots a little bit low, and uh, so I've actually relieved the... Uh, front sight to get it to kind of come up some, uh, which I'll continue to do. I did bring it up quite a bit. Uh, but one of the big things about the aluminum frame, though, is is that in military use, they found that uh, the slides could crack with a lot of shooting, uh, especially more high-velocity ammunition. And they were shooting a lot of machine gun 9mm, and which has a lot more power to it. So there is a locking bolt that fits through many of these, and you'll find it's like a hex bolt. It fits about right there. 
uh, and that seemed to stop a lot of the excessive wear against the aluminum frame. Uh, but honestly, shooting this uh, regularly uh, with standard ball ammunition, you shouldn't have any problems. Uh, one thing too is it has the what they call the fat slide. It's a thicker slide uh, than the original. And uh, one of the ways you can tell that is there are no serrations on the thin slide. If you have the fat slide, it'll have these serrations at the front. So this particular model has kind of a, uh, it's kind of a hybrid between the two. Uh, the P01 wasn't marked until a number of years later. Uh, most of your your wartime uh, P38s did not have wall, the Walther banner on them. Uh, some of the early ones did, but they started putting a special code on here to keep allies from bombing the factories and being able to find out where they're made. The barrel is 4.9 inches in length. Uh, the overall length of the pistol is 8.5 inches. It's 5.5 inches in height and it's 1.16 inches in width. With the fatter slide, it's actually about 1.25, so it's a little bit wider uh, with the fat slide. Uh, the original grips were wood, and then they went to a Bakelite. Now, these black grips, uh, obviously, are some kind of uh, plastic polymer, and um, this is what you'll see on most of the imported guns that are coming in. A few years ago, the Russians imported a bunch of these into the United States, and you'll know those because they have kind of a, a baked-on finish to it. But the German guns had the blue, and it's actually a matte blue. Originally, it was a very high-polished blue, and then they went with the matte blue. The P-38 was made to chamber 9mm and also 30 Luger and 22 long rifle. I have seen quite a few of the 30 Lugers that have been coming into the country. Now, these have been off and on as far as spotty uh, coming in as far as imports. And a few years ago, a bunch came in through Century Arms, and uh, they sell it pretty quickly. Uh, this one actually is imported also by Century Arms, has the uh, stamping right here, which according to ATF rules, when you import a gun, it has to be a prominent place on the pistol. And on this side, we have the Walther banner, uh, P38, Carl Walther. Proof marks are marked all along the, the frame and along the barrel right here. Uh, just a number of different markings. Uh, this is not a World War II pistol. It is a post-war. Nice lanyard loop at the bottom of the grip, and the, it does just smoothly right in. I mean, it is a smooth action. Uh, one of the things a lot of people don't like the hill type mag release, but once you get used to it, it's not too difficult. Uh, this particular pistol came with just one magazine, but there are a lot of aftermarket and original P38 magazines that are available, uh, typically for around the $25 mark. In fact, I've got one on the way. Uh, they do have holsters and a lot of accessories that go with these pistols. In fact, right here in the background is one of the Flecktarn uh, West German camouflage ponchos, and I just thought it was very fitting for this pistol. I'm going to demonstrate the loaded chamber indicator with a dummy round. Right here above the firing pin, you'll notice that little pin protruding, and that is your indicator that the gun is loaded. Once we take the dummy round out, you can see the pin is recessed, so it's tactile and visual. Now to disassemble the pistol, first remove your magazine, double check to make sure that it is empty. Uh, when you bring the slide back, just engage your slide release, and then right here is a small lever. Just bring that down and around, there'll be a little groove at, or cut at the top, and this will allow the slide to pass through. Disengage your slide release, then you need to trigger, pull the trigger, and release the hammer, and this will pull it right off. Now the barrel, just bring it right out. There is a small locking block right here, and this is a falling locking block. This is was really innovative for this design, very similar to what the Beretta is today, and with the open slide. Uh, this just pops right out. When you want to clean, there's a little spring that catches it, brings it back in, locks it into place. You'll notice that when it's fully up, that this little pin sticks out, you bring that down and the pin drops, and that has to do with locking up, which makes this gun really accurate. You'll see the recoil springs, they're dual, they run on either side. Now to disassemble this, you actually pull it from the back. So you take a little small punch, pull that spring out, and just pull it out. I just chose not to do it because I didn't want to damage the springs taking them in and out, especially with this older firearm. The great thing is, though, is parts should be pretty plentiful for these because there were so many of these made. To reassemble, take your barrel. Make sure the locking block is in the down position. Slide it in, then push it forward. Hit the slide rails. Bring it back and engage your slide stop. 
bring your takedown lever up and then release the slide and you're ready to go. Here at the range, the recoil is really mild. It's a lot of fun to shoot. It's really smooth. I mean, the uh, slide functions really well on the frame. Uh, uh, very similar to the Beretta. It's a very smooth gliding effect. Um, and of course, with the weight of the pistol, even though this is aluminum, it still is pretty hefty. You've got a good grip to be able to grab the pistol pretty easily. Now the sights are fairly rudimentary with the U-notch in the back uh, and the blade at the front, but it wasn't that difficult to pick it up. Uh, just dot the I is what most people say about these pistols. And uh, you know, and it'll do its part. Okay, the magazine's really quality made, it's really slick, it moves in and out of the action very quickly. Uh, with just eight and one, <laughs> you really need that. And I want to thank Federal Premium for sponsoring the ammo um, with the American Eagle. Uh, and with that being said, one of the things you don't want to shoot through here is plus P's. Uh, or you know high velocity ammunition you just stick to your standard ball ammunition or white box uh, that's the best to shoot through these this gun is really ergonomic fits the hand very well uh, it's very well balanced most of the weight is over your grip and uh, it just really points well and it shoots well the all steel frame p38s weighed 34.5 ounces uh, this p01 weighs 28.2 ounces now there are a huge disparity with price on these pistols. Uh, typically, I've been seeing these on Gun Broker, some of the imported ones going for around the $400 mark. You may be able to find it cheaper uh, if you look around, uh, but I've seen P38s all the way up to $4,000. Uh, so there's a lot of different history, a lot of different markings, especially when you get into the German World War II models. There are a lot of collector editions. Uh, one of the things, though, to note is that if it's an aluminum frame, it is not a uh, wartime model. Uh, they had all steel frames. So anytime, except for the commercial models, which did have aluminum frames. Like all of these surplus pistols that come into the country, uh, once supply is gone, the prices go up. Uh, I've seen it over and over again. Uh, these have been imported recently, so the price should be pretty decent. Uh, if you can't find them, you can have your dealer get in touch with Century Arms and they can supply them uh, as supplies last. And again, just like the Mosin and the Gant, when they were first coming into the country, they were around $59 a piece. Now they're up to about the $250 range. And like all the other pistols and rifles that are before them. So as these imports come in, I just highly recommend, if you're interested, to buy it now and uh, you know you really get a great piece of history there's a lot of soul with these pistols uh, that you don't find with the new modern pistols battle proven while they're made used throughout world war ii and beyond gonna have to give it a big thumbs way up be strong be of good courage god bless america long live the republic We have Carl Walther and uh, the uh, Waffenfabrik und Du. It is a hammer-fired pistol. Okay, there I go, without safety checking. Which is very reminiscent of the Beretta 94. The Beretta 94. Oh. And you say, Suits, you give everything a thumbs way up. Well, I don't review it if it's not worth reviewing. And as my good friend Jacob says, you can hammer cock this sucker just like a revolver. Oh yeah!